Hello, everybody, and welcome to this month's Heart Bunch video. Yes, this month we are talking about how to prevent burnout. Now, you might wonder what is the difference between burnout and stress? Sometimes we tend to think they're interchangeable or they have, they kind of mean the same thing, um, but they are actually a little bit different physiologically and as far as like how, you know, how it impacts our health or how ha it can impact our health. So think about it this way. Stress is a feeling of too much, like there's too much work, too many responsibilities, too much on your plate. Um, and usually, you know, if you feel like you can get some of that stuff resolved, then the stress will get, you know, minimized or it'll, it'll go away. Whereas burnout, on the other hand, feels like there's not enough. You know, you feel hopeless, helplessness, you feel kind of detached from work, detached from your life. Um, maybe from your activities and things like that. So, and that can, that can progress into depression and anxiety and, and things like that. So we wanted to talk about a couple of tips, uh, different tips on how to prevent burnout. Um, the first tip, you know, is, is to consider when you're at work or when you, when you do stuff at work, reframe your outlook. And what that really means is, you know, you can, you can take a vacation, take a real vacation, meaning you, you turn off your cell phone, get away from social media, try not to look at your email, really take some time away from work. But also it includes um, practicing declining some things. If someone asks you to do something and you really, really cannot, or you just you just don't have the time or the energy or you don't think you can devote time to it, practice declining and saying no so you're not adding more to your plate. The other thing is really question that assumption about what you have control over at work and what kinds of things you can do to limit those responsibilities. You know, sometimes we think that when we're, when we're working, you know, our boss asks us to do something, we have to do it. We have to do it by a certain deadline. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know, and those are, those, that can be kind of a dangerous road to, to go down, to spiral down. So really, really consider what are some things that you can talk to your supervisor about, or you could talk to your coworkers about, ask for help, and, and try, to, try, to schedule, um, try to schedule your responsibilities in your work hours so that, so that you are not, you know, overdoing things and you're not leading, get, getting yourself down that road. Okay. So I would like to pass it on to Tim for his awesome tip. Okay. Hey, thanks, Gab. I'm going to talk about um, preventing burnout by being in tune with yourself, taking time to understand your whole self. We talk about, for example, physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, and environmental components of health, but you really know what those mean. For yourself. Learn those items that are going to be important to you so you can be aware and take action regarding your body's physical and emotional needs. For example, don't ignore certain things like hunger, crankiness, restlessness, those type of things. And also adopt a keep me healthy mindset. We talk about being a little bit, for lack of a better term, selfish with yourself while you're doing some things that are important to help you feel better and gain some momentum back. So remember, only you can choose to be angry. We talk about people wanting to make you angry. Well, you have to actually allow that to happen. So keep a healthy mindset, learn how to respond kindly and see if that can help you get over that little bump. We also talk about actions that fit your moral compass. Take those actions, not others, that may be something that puts you at risk or makes you feel poorly for what's happening. Uh, sometimes that can lead to, we hope it leads to increased life satisfaction and can combat hopelessness. So just a few tips. I'm gonna send you now to Candice. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about reevaluating your priorities. Um, so it's important to, to decide what is important in your life and this includes things in your work life and your personal life. So. Um, how you want to eat and how much you want to sleep and how much you want to be physically active. Um, and then setting boundaries and setting your days up to really reflect what's important for you. So making time to be active during your day, um, making sure that you 
set up your day so that you can get to bed at a time that allows you to have the amount of sleep that you'd like to have. And then also setting a time aside time for relaxation, um, whether it's doing something, some type of um, hobby or task that you enjoy, um, or taking some time to be mindful or practice meditation. Um, but really evaluating your priorities and then setting up your life in a way that reflects those priorities will help avoid burnout. And I'm gonna pass it on to Marin. Great, thanks. So I'm gonna talk about preventing burnout at work by finding meaning in your work. And the first thing to know is that what you do matters to others, whether it's installing carpets, um, ask, answering customer service calls, or um, serving pancakes, it doesn't matter. What you do is making a difference um, to the people you're serving. And that by itself, if we think about it, can give us a sense of meaning at work because we're helping people around us. The other thing we can do to make meaning at work is to create shared meaning. And we can do that with our coworkers by um, maybe having a conversation about how do we like to be appreciated? Some people want appreciation with verbal compliments and want to be told how great they're doing. For other people, that's uncomfortable. They don't want the spotlight on them, but they love it when someone helps them out with a task when they're feeling overwhelmed. And so if you have that conversation with your coworkers, you'll each be able to show appreciation. And, um, and in that process, um, when you're receiving that appreciation, it makes your job feel even more valuable and meaningful. And then just one third way um, is to um, make your work even more meaningful. And you could do this by sort of envisioning what it is you want to accomplish with your career goals and then take advantage of the trainings. Um, often our workplaces offer free trainings. There's a lot of online trainings now um, because of the COVID um, situation where um, you can sign up for those and you can update skills, you can learn new skills and find ways to um, improve your professional development. And that's a way to find a little more meaning at work and get to where you want to be and just revitalize ourselves and our interest in our jobs. And I'm gonna pass it off to Matea. Thanks, Marin. Today, I wanna to talk about turning to others in regards to preventing burnout. Um, when we kind of think about some of the symptoms that Gabby mentioned earlier on, it's important to be kind of paying attention to those as you're going throughout your work and as you're going throughout your week, if you're starting to feel some of those symptoms come on um, that are kind of potentially you know, related to burnout, this is when I would first recommend reaching out to others. Now, I find it really beneficial to reach out to my, my colleagues or my peers who maybe have similar roles as I do, maybe have some of the same stressors at work, concerns related to job duties or whatever it may be, who can really empathize with what I'm going through. And I think having someone to talk to and just having someone to listen who understands can be really valuable. I also think if you're really starting to recognize burnout or feeling like you might be progressing towards burnout, I, I would recommend meeting with your boss or your employer to talk through that. Because oftentimes, kind of like what Marin was alluding to, there are a lot of resources that are available. And once um, our leaders know that this is something that we're struggling with, oftentimes they're more than happy to help us provide us with resources, talk through situations with us, and help ensure that we can be successful and, uh, in our workplace and enjoy our work without ever getting to, to that point of being completely burnt out. So really turning to others and utilizing the people that you work with as resources to kind of help prevent burnout from starting or from progressing. And Ashley, now to you. Thanks, Matea. I'm going to talk a little bit about practicing gratitude and expressing gratitude in your work and your personal life to help with preventing burnout. It's really important to show when you are grateful for something, and that can be something as small as having a chocolate chip cookie in the morning or having an, a couple minutes in the morning to drink your beverage of choice before starting your day, or even having a time to just talk with a coworker. And you can express this gratitude in a lot of different ways. You can write a gratitude journal for yourself and you can document that. And there's a lot of positive effects on the brain for documenting your own gratitude and feelings of positivity throughout the day, throughout the week. And you can also do this by expressing gratitude and saying, hey, I really appreciated it when you did this. It really helped me out. Or 
I was so thankful that we were able to do this thing together and it helped me in this way. Uh, and so that's a, just a couple of ways to do that. But you can also do this in your personal life and expressing gratitude can actually help strengthen relationships as well. So including relationships with our kids, with our family, with our partners and our friends. So it's really a great tool to uh, practice and help with burnout, but also to strengthen relationships. And then if we are feeling burnt out, we have those relationships to help us fall back on and that positivity that we've been building with our gratitude. And that's the tip of the day are those tips that we wanted to share with you in our Heart Bunch video this week. We want to thank you again for checking in with us and hearing some of our tips. If you would like to stay in touch, please visit our website and our social media all listed here. And here's a list of our very brief references for this presentation. Thanks again for joining us for this month's Heart Bunch video.